Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the Mind Cure, coming at you with a brand new episode of the NCSL Ch Dynasty here on NCAA 14, and also featuring that college football revamp. We are closing in on the very end of the regular season, and we have a lot of implications around the countries. Teams fighting for bowl eligibility. We also have teams fighting for an opportunity to compete for a conference championship. And most importantly, we have teams out here right now that are competing for the opportunity to go to the college football playoff and compete for a national championship. In today's episode, we will have 16 nationally televised games, and it will be a doozy all throughout the country as we will see 16 games in gameplay in this episode. And what we'll also end up seeing is we are going to see studio updates as well as check on some other games around the country as well. So a lot of action here in week number 13. Hope you guys are excited for it. And if you are, make sure you go ahead and smack that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you have to be brand new to the channel. Let's go ahead and dive right into the action. I'll see you guys on the football fields around the country. So we will go ahead and start week number 13 action with the number nine Michigan Wolverines. They will play host to the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Iowa looking for a big time upset to finish off the regular season and got a nice drive to start things out. So much so that Austin Steele is going to get the scoring started for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And now we see this Iowa team up 7 to nothing, could even take a 14 nothing lead. And they do with Lonnie Jackson. So this Michigan squad has officially been put on notice. We'll see how this Michigan squad can work things out. They are in that college football playoff hunt, but they are facing some adversity early in this game. But eventually the Wolverines will get on the scoreboard themselves as Jeff Griffin will find the center of the end zone to cut it down to just a seven point game. And then later on in the first quarter as well, going to hand it off to Eddie West. And he's going to just go north and south. He'll run it right into the heart of the Iowa defense. Time this game up at 14. So a very high scoring first quarter. This is usually not something that we see from your typical Iowa games. But here we are barbecue on the titties. We got ourselves a pretty offensive minded game all of a sudden. And that is going to continue here in the second quarter where Lawrence Arnold's going to just throw a dime to Austin Rogers. Austin Rogers gives Michigan their first lead of the day. But yet here we are here in the second half. Iowa down by 10 trying to keep up with the vaunted Michigan Wolverines. That's a good throw over the middle of the field to Austin Steele. Austin Steele will pick up the first down there, and it will now set up a goal line situation. Third and goal, going to run it up the gut with Damian Porter. Damian Porter is going to score, but that was as close as what Michigan was going to allow them to get for the remainder of this game as late in that third quarter, going into the fourth quarter, we really just start to see that Michigan team really begin to take control as they'll run it up the gut yet again for Eddie West. And Eddie West will indeed find the end zone for the Wolverines. And that will make it a 41, actually a big time win for Michigan as they will finish the regular season with double digit wins. Now, we have some more games happening. That was certainly not the only one that we'll have in this episode. Notably, in this next slate of games, we'll have Washington and Oregon. A nice little top 25 matchup, but big time implications elsewhere in the country as Clemson taking on Virginia Tech. The winner of this game will be hosting the ACC Championship against the winner of the Carolinas Division. So, this is a big time uh, opportunity to take control and win the Commonwealth Division. That is what is at stake here today. Virginia Tech down 7 and nothing, but ranked number 19 in the nation. Speaking of 19, he's going to throw a dot to Ryan Scott. They'll let Virginia Tech tie this game. And then eventually we'll see the Hokies also add to the lead as well. Travis Cook able to contort the body extremely nicely 
to give Virginia Tech their first lead of the day. But this Clemson team, they have certainly been on fire. It is hot like my mixtape. And it's, it's, it's been some hot running as well from Dominique Holly, who ties this game up at 14 all. Nice play run there. But the last two minutes of this first half was where this bread and butter was truly made. Dominique Holly able to create nothing out of something as that's a huge reception that's going to get Clemson into field goal range already. But I'm sure they're thinking more than just field goals. I'm sure they want to come out here, finish this drive with a touchdown as Darren Smith does get him into the red zone. Is now 14 still all oh, still your score it's Dominic Holly trying to run up the gut he runs through the hokey defense and the Clemson Tigers will retake the lead we got an exciting one here in Blacksburg Virginia however the Hokies cannot respond so Clemson looking for more points to put on the board before we go into that halftime locker room We'll see if Clemson can double dip before we go into halftime. That's a good throw over the right-hand side as there was two receivers versus one defender. That does leave Lance Howard wide but naked open. That's great awareness there by Adrian Davidson. And Clemson with a commanding lead here deep into the second half. And they're kind of looking to try to put the nail in the coffin already. This has been a little bit of a shocker with just how well Clemson has been playing in this game as Dominique Hawley we're gonna run it down the sideline looking for the end zone and the refs will signal touchdown once again Virginia Tank not only losing but they are being shell-shocked right now they don't really have any answers right now as we go into that fourth quarter Clemson dominating with that 21 point lead already and looking to add on to it as well. Adrian in the shotgun formation. Looks over the middle and finds his receiver. Yet again, touchdown Clemson. And the Tigers win big 45-27. to As they'll control their own destiny in the ACC. Now, that being said, we now go to the Bayou State. And we have a little bit of Bayou State supremacy going on here. We got the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette. They'll make that field trip down the Baton Rouge to take on the LSU Tigers uh, who have really disappointed so far this year five and five going into this game uh, whoever wins this game though does become bowl eligible so LSU can at least make sure to make that happen but needless to say for LSU this has been a very disappointing season but you know here towards the end of the regular season looks like Craig Rogers starting to find that footing a little bit here as he'll throw a touchdown uh, to Stevenson so LSU dominating going into the fourth quarter we'll see if they can hang on and win this game as Rage of Cadence will be looking for a big time comeback of their own as Ryan Seward man just carrying some defenders put him on the back took that man for a little bit of a ride so it sets up a really easy goal line opportunity for Deion Ryan to take advantage of he gets into that end zone and was completely untouched while in the process of doing so. So all of a sudden, this game gets a lot more interesting here. 24 to 17 being your score. So if LSU doesn't come away with points on this drive, then it's going to get even more interesting. And here we are, third and 17. They need a first down. Rodgers firing downfield and finds Quayden Stevens. And once again, he had that touchdown earlier in the game. And now the Raging Cajuns out of timeouts, but LSU choosing not to run out the clock. Instead, the custom Travel Bankston is going to score for LSU. Trying to add a little bit of style points there, and they certainly accomplished that. So LSU, they will be guaranteed to be bowl eligible. Now we go to our first top 25 game that we have in this episode. One of three such top 25 games, two of which happening in this Pac-12 conference, we start with Washington going on the road to take on Oregon, who just got back into the top 25. They're ranked number 24 in the country, but Oregon's certainly going to be challenged by this Washington rushing game. They know a thing or two about running the football, but they also have been finding the passing game more often as Jason Smith fires a ball at the Brandon Turner. That's a 42-yard reception, and eventually the Huskies... Late in the first quarter, they got a great drive. 
and it's gonna end with a Washington touchdown. I'm gonna call it a passing touchdown. That was technically a forward pass. I don't know how they pulled it off, but the refs will uh, call that a forward pass. So Washington will have a seven nothing lead late in the first quarter, but Oregon looking to answer back though. Montreal Hawkins, the FCS transfer. Well, he just he bamboozled himself. He puts the ball on the ground. Had a decent carry too, but got a little bit too greedy and it's going to Washington going the other way. So we'll see if Washington can take advantage of that as Jason Smith, he run that triple option to perfection. Look at him go down the sideline and he is going to be pushed out of bounds. But that was a 28 yard run for the quarterback, Jason Smith. And now it's a goal line situation. Start of the second quarter. And it looks like Washington will score yet again. This time it is Adrian Nicholas who finds the end zone through the air. Beautiful job setting up that halfback screen. So if Oregon wants to win this game, needless to say, they need to get at it quickly. And just a man wide but naked open. It's David Miller with a 52-yard strike touchdown, Oregon. And the Ducks are right back in it. And on Sands St Stadium finally has something to cheer about was able to see the stadium in person earlier this summer man it's a beautiful stadium but seven point game between these two teams we're getting down to the last minute here of this first half and if i'm showing special teams you already know something's about to go down breaks a couple of tackles down the sideline it's a foot race not one then he loses easily and he is going to be gone like a girl in a country song touchdown washington and the Huskies extend their lead. And how about that for an emphatic statement going into the end of the first half? So Oregon down by 14 as we get into the second half of action. But Jeff Brady looking to even things up a little bit. As that's a big time run for the Oregon tailback. A 50 yard carry. And that sets him up for a goal on set for them right now. And Jeff Brady looking to finish and he does just Shows that he is not getting tired anytime soon. Oregon again back in this ball game. Will now cut to that fourth quarter though. And we actually didn't have anything crazy happen that fourth quarter. I know it was a little bit anticlimactic, but Washington's still able to hang on and win 24 to 20. Now that being said, we now go to the Southeast to check in on a pair of top 25 teams out in the SEC. First, we'll check in on the team that is the newer of the top 25 teams, the Florida Gators, who just now got in. They're at number 25 in the country, but this UCF team, well, this uh, Golden Knight team is certainly better than what it was this time last year. UCF was in danger of going 0-12, it seemed like, at this point in the year, but now they're playing. They're still playing meaningful football. They're 5-5. Five and five. Winning this game will make sure that they are indeed bowl eligible. So we'll see if UCF can pull off a big upset towards the end of this regular season. Here we are late in the second quarter. Gators up by 10. But UCF looking to find the end zone for the first time today. And they are going to get it. Touchdown UCF. The Knights are back to within just a field goal. But now Florida trying to get busy with it, trying to add some points before we go into halftime. One of the last plays I will see in the second quarter. BJ looking over the middle and finds Mike Hairston for the touchdown yet again. And the Florida Gators with a 17-7 lead. Meanwhile, in the, second, in the second half of this game, BJ Peters... Really making it difficult on himself. I honestly thought he should have had a touchdown there. Probably not the best vision. You know, this Florida team still kind of building themselves up a little bit more. But they're still having an excellent season. And how about Peters just absolutely faking everybody in the stands right there. Nobody was following him to the end zone. As the Gators win this game pretty comfortably. Winning set by 17. Meanwhile, we'll check in on the most dominant teams in the country. How about Georgia? Coming in 10 and 0, and if they win this game, they will be ensuring that they get to host the SEC championship. We'll see if they can handle their business against Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern looking to stay alive. 
affordable eligibility hunt, but they need a big time upset in order to make that happen. But seems like this Eagles team could be up for the occasion. How about this run over to left hand side? He said, Buck Miller said, get away from my lemonade stand. That's a good run there by Buck Miller. We'll see if they go back to that read option. And sure enough, they do. This time, Buck Miller gets in untouched. And all of a sudden, we have ourselves a football game. This, this could get interesting all of a sudden. I expected a blowout. Oh, this might be it right here. Georgia with a bigger lead. 21-7 at the end of the first quarter of action. This is what we've been accustomed to watching Georgia football. But again, but when we just think that this was going to be this runaway game that they're going to go and be comfortable, well, Reggie Jefferson's going to make sure that they do not let that happen as Georgia Southern, they're going to score there. It makes it 28 to 14. But I mean, if Georgia Southern's going to win this game because defense is doing their job, they really have been doing their job. Defense got to step up. They got to find a way to get some stops here in the red zone because Georgia has been able to do Whatever they've wanted so far in this game is Adam Williams again is going to score. That means Georgia is on pace right now to score 70. The score 70 in this uh, nationally televised matchup. But here we are in the third quarter. Georgia Southern was able to add a field goal off screen. But we'll see if they get more aggressive here. Maybe go for some two point conversions because it's clear that maybe the defense is not going to help them all that much. Is this a great run here by Skip Brown? The FCS transfer? He'll find the end zone. And sure enough, Georgia Southern still making things interesting. This offense is humming at a high level. It really is. Buck Miller is going to make sure that they get to 30. This is a season high in which Georgia has allowed the entire season. No one has been able to score 30 points against his Georgia defense, Georgia Southern, who might not even make it to a bowl game. They just accomplished that. So shout out to Georgia Southern for even being able to accomplish that in the first place. But again, that defense is just really letting them down here. Georgia again is going to score. They're on the verge of a 50 burger. Adam Williams also breaking a record there. And speaking of records, we'll see another one here for Zach Grigsby. He's going to find the end zone yet again. And you can tell that Andre Bryant really loves this guy because Zach Grigsby, he's going to have his fourth team touchdown of the year. That is a single season record at the University of Georgia and the Bulldogs. Well, they will be hosting those SEC championships. So now we go into the coveted Battle of L.A., USC ranked number one in the country. They will be taking on the number 12 ranked Bruins of UCLA. This Bruin, this could be a fun one to watch for sure as USC looking to continue their dominant season. They have already clenched the, uh, a trip to the Pac-12 championship. They have a pretty sizable lead against UCLA here. But UCLA could uh, play a little bit of spoiler, maybe make it a little bit harder for USC to make it to the college football playoff. You can tell right away, UCLA, they came ready to play as Brent Childress gets a big time run there. That is his ninth touchdown of the year. It's been a solid year for, for Brent Childress and not a liquid or a gas. However, USC, they have a big time offense of their own. Ben Scott! He's got an arm on him for sure as USC quickly is going to even it up as Jeff Evans. He's just going to run away from the entire UCLA secondary. And that was even with Ben Scott having a man in his face. He was completely unfazed by that pressure. We could be in for a little bit of a shootout on our hands as we get late into the first quarter as UCLA we're going to retake the lead we got another man open and UCLA scores again Sean Rivera with a 66 yard strike will score for UCLA my word that was a big time throw or what that is incredibly sexy to watch I'll tell you what so UCLA will take the lead there. And we have a little bit of a lull in scoring after that. But three minutes and a half left in the second quarter. Ben Scott, he rediscovers the end zone. He'll find Myron Jones in the back of it. Beautiful dot, by the way. 
as Ben Scott will get his second passing touchdown of the afternoon. It's been a good afternoon for Ben Scott. 10 for 13, 138, two touchdowns. He's been, put, he's been rising up to the occasion for sure. He, he's really have been doing that. We'll see if he can do that again here with two minutes left. Scott's got some time. And he's going to find a wide butt naked open. Jason Clayton, who's going to score again for USC. Ben Scott with his third touchdown now. He's been be living in the nightmares of the UCLA defensive coordinator all night long. Wow, that was a big time throw again by Ben Scott. Just looking through his progressions and doing a wonderful job. And you can already tell that Ben Scott is going to be in for a big day. But we'll see if the other aspects of the team can also step up as well. We might see that here. A touchdown on the ground? Not quite. But USC does almost have 100 yards rushing. We'll see if they go back to that ground game. And it looks like they will. They will allow John Concepcion, the FCS transfer, to find the end zone. And USC, again, will make it a 28-14 lead. But here we go now, later in the third quarter. Again, Ben Scott going to work. Who's supposed to govern that guy? If there was absolutely nobody around him, that might be the easiest score that Ben Scott is going to have all day. I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, look at that. No, there was nobody in the picture there, practically. I mean, what are we doing? This UCLA crowd not doing very good here in this Battle of LA. But... Fourth quarter, USC looking to put an exclamation point on this ball game, but the ball's on the ground, though. Thankfully, the running back, Nick Richard, just happened to be in the area. He's going to recover the fumble, but third and long, though. Third and long situation here in the red zone, and Scott able to work the pocket really well there. He's going to find Freddie Warren again in the back of the end zone. Another touchdown for Ben Scott. He's That's his fifth passing touchdown of the day but then after that we do start to see UCLA wake up a little bit I don't know if it's going to be enough to win this game but they're certainly going to try their best to cover the spread or you know at least a bare minimum make the scoreboard look prettier than really what happened here because USC dominated this game it's impressive what USC was able to do and that's why they're ranked number one you saw Georgia Southern struggle a little bit uh against that georgia southern team usc they are going to take care of business they made it look pretty easy i mean this was a 42 to 14 game at one point in the fourth quarter but you uh, ucla they're looking for that 30 plus they're not going to make that happen though as uh we will see this quarterback get picked off and this is the only time the only uh turnover that we saw the entire game brian daniels didn't have a bad day himself 23 for 27 237 two touchdowns one interception but just could not keep up with this usc team today as they will get to 11 and 0 prior to that final regular season week but even more games getting ready to go around the country one of which is a team that's new to the top 25 how about washington state they're new to the party at number 23 in the country. Is that is a pile drive on Julius Jones? Oh my, did he get absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree there? So how about that? Julius Jones still in the game. I don't know how after that hit, although he will get a little bit of breather. Cornelius Gordon uh, will ultimately get that touchdown run. So Washington State starting off pretty good with that seven nothing lead, but. Oregon State, they're trying to get a drive together of their own. And I mean, this is why they're three and seven, right? You, you know, you can't turn the ball over in the red zone. You just cannot do that. And that's exactly what the Beavers did. So chance for Oregon State to tie that game there. And it just doesn't happen that time around. So Oregon State, they will get into the red zone uh, in the second quarter, though. We'll see if they have better results this time around. They go a little bit of halfback draw. Now, that back draw almost gets him in. Eric Golden with a solid rush there. He'll pick up a gain of five off of that. But on fourth and goal, they're actually choosing to go for it. Going to risk it for the biscuit. And Defender did a really good job shadowing him, but just could not locate the ball. So 
Oregon State probably shouldn't have gotten that touchdown there, but they will get it anyways. And then later on, they'll find the end zone yet again in that second quarter of action. Oregon State will take the lead. And they'll be looking at like one of those teams that takes the lead and just never looks back. But hang on now. We got some drama on the field, a fumble. But the Cougars couldn't do anything with it. Matter of fact, offense was shut down today. They'll likely be leaving the top 25. Meanwhile, we got Notre Dame taking on the thundering herd of Marshall. Marshall coming in at 7-4, and four, while Notre Dame at 6-4. and four. This is a, a game that could have some MAC conference implications. Uh, this has been the worst conference in this series, it seems like, which I was a little surprised about because, you know, Notre Dame is a big-time program. Tennessee is also, you know, one of the bigger programs in the country as well. So I'm a little surprised the conference is essentially as bad as it actually is but you know it is what it is sometimes but that being said though uh what we are going to see here is well we'll see what happens with this particular game because this could determine who goes to that mac conference championship game at the end of the season still a tie game too it's all knotted up at seven apiece both of these teams kind of feeling each other out right now as Greg Hunt will have a third and short coming up, facing a little bit of pressure, but he will end up finding Andre Hagen eventually. Almost finds the end zone two off of this very first catch of the day. We'll see if they punch it in though, as Greg Hunt, he's just gonna put it in himself, and Notre Dame will take the lead here in you know, the Appalachians of West Virginia. Meanwhile, in that second quarter of action, Greg Hunt again, utilizing those legs and I thought we were going to see a fumble there with the way that camera angle kind of changed a little bit but Greg Hunt uh, does hang on to the football after all facing a third in inches too they only need one inch to pick up a first down it looks like they are going to have plenty of inches or at least that's what my wife tells tells me Barrett Cooper going to be picking up the first down with ease and now looking up a goal line situation Barrett Cooper we got that first down earlier, but was going to punch it into the end zone as well. So Marshall was actually down by quite a bit here. They got some work to do if they want to get back into this game, but that touchdown will sure help them there in the third quarter. But still down by 13 in the fourth. Marshall needing a big fourth quarter if they want to come back and mess around and actually win this game. But Marshall is able to put themselves in a spot. To make this a one's possession game, third and goal, doing a toss to the left hand side, and Jim Black helps execute to perfection right there as Marshall now has a chance to win this game. Less than three minutes left. Marshall trying to make some things shake. Quarterback's gonna scramble upfield. He's all by himself down the sideline. He's gonna finally be pushed out about the 20 yard line. Good timing, too, because Dante Weber did put the ball on the ground you do absolutely hate to see that but here we are goal line situation marshall got a chance to win this game third and goal weber dropping back he's got some time fires over the middle but it's intercepted it's gonna be picked off and it's gonna be over notre dame will hang on and win by a fred as the fighting irish will get their seventh win of the season well, Marshall's regular season ends in absolute disappointment. So now, speaking of that MAC conference, could that open a door for a West Virginia? West Virginia, despite the mediocre record at 5-5, five and five, they could uh, sneak their way in to the MAC championship game as well, albeit probably not as the type of team that is going to uh, play for uh, like hosting the MAC championship. We'll put it like that, but uh, Illinois uh, and West Virginia going at it here and got a close game here in the early going here. Seven to three being your score. We'll see if Illinois can take their first lead of the day, though, and sure enough, they do. Alex Taylor able to be part of that 10 toes down movement. That is going to be a nice uh, throw there, but and that was really crucial that they were able to finish the way that they did because it seemed like for most of this game, points were certainly at a premium there was certainly a premium in in terms of getting points and getting red zone opportunities so 
when teams got into the red zone in this particular game you really had to take advantage because there really wasn't a lot of opportunities i mean we only seen 30 points scored between these two teams at this point and the game is almost over but dan bishop will give west virginia the lead here with 325 left which now means that illinois is going to have to put a drive together if they want overtime or if they want the win and it looks like they might be rising up to the occasion as i don't know how that's caught alex walker somehow comes down with that coverage was good coverage was actually really good there but doesn't matter illinois drive stays alive and two plays later john love closing moments of this game might have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat and that is exactly what happened here illinois is going to pull off a minor upset here winning by four but now speaking of those uh average to below average teams will now check in on indiana taking on michigan state both teams uh uh fighting to try to remain alive in the uh bowl uh eligibility race indiana's got an offensive coordinator dalton barrettine you know looking for uh you know his guys to step up and you know play some pretty good football here but right now it looks like that's not happening necessarily jonas whitlock gets a good run there picks up the first down for the spartans and will be rewarded with a touchdown in which he actually does not uh nobody touches him nobody touches him at all and that was the theme of the day here in this michigan state and indiana game uh the spartans they were really taking control of this game early on is the spartans you know they knew that indiana if they did not bring their a game they are certainly a team that would have been capable of beating them but it looks like michigan state they came ready to play today for sure as this game never seemed like it was close michigan ends up putting a 50 burger as well on the hoosiers winning 52 to 27. that being said we have some time now to get a studio update we haven't had studio updates yet today and how about houston getting a close win against baylor 24 23 there and then that was not the only games that we saw this is gonna shake some things up in the polls akron able to stun ohio state in their regular season finale akron wins by six and now that puts the zips on the map but colorado state puts themselves in that dark horse to make the college football playoff at this point in the season they now will get to 10 and 1 as well after they got done with a shootout against the boise state broncos colorado state wins 49 to 42. finally rounding out these earlier studio updates how about south alabama they're going to pull the upset on auburn 41 to 34 which means auburn will likely be falling out of the top 25 here as well so now we got a couple of borderline top 10 teams ready to go to work first and foremost we got G jd weeks the offensive coordinator of troy his team will be on national television for the first and likely only time this season they'll be taking on number 11 alabama but this game has been going exactly how Troy wants it to go. You know, J.D. Weeks, he's a guy that loves to run the triple option, likes to uh, milk as much clock as possible because there isn't a ton of talent on this Troy roster. Let's, let's keep it real for a minute. So Troy has a 7-0 lead here. This has been a very low-scoring game, a type of game that would actually favor Troy, like I said earlier, right? But Alabama, last couple of minutes of this half, they're trying to put a drive together and you know curtis west you know is keeping his composure even though things have not really gone his way particularly but there's some fantastic skill guys on this alabama offense that you know he can sure utilize like quinn lake who just turned a halfback screen to a 30 yard gain you absolutely love to see that and then speaking of things you love to see great throw there to james robinson he'll pick up 10 to make this a goal line opportunity as well We'll see if Alabama can punch it in. Wes, facing some pressure, gets away from a defender and finds Quinn Lake, who will just simply not be denied. He will not be denied there. That's going to tie the game going into the halftime locker room, and it will remain tied going into late in the third quarter, actually. Tim Williams, he's going to get a reception here for Troy as the Trojans are looking to put points on the board yet again. A matter of fact, they will indeed do so with Quan Taylor with a nice seven-yard reception there. 
So Troy all of a sudden has the lead going into the fourth quarter. They just need one more quarter and then they're going to pull off a massive upset that could very well help them out in recruiting, but just wasn't meant to be here today as Alabama. They're going to kick a last second field goal. So not a pretty game for Alabama at all. This was a D minus type of game for Alabama, but Crimson Tide are still going to find a win the game, even though they could have played significantly better. Now, that being said, we'll now check in on the defending national champions, the number five Miami Hurricanes. And the Hurricanes, you know, looking to finish this regular season as strong as well, looking as if we will be seeing uh, my Georgia. They will be seeing Georgia in that SEC championship type of rematch. That would be a rematch between those two programs last season. But Miami, they are going to uh, actually uh, be in an interesting game against Southern Florida. We haven't really seen uh, the Miami offense really be itself as of recently not what we've been accustomed to seeing maybe in season number one might be some uh some chinks in the armor but defense still playing really well in that only allowing the Bulls to get a singular field goal so far and Mr. Carter will eventually get some uh some points on the board as well so 20 point lead here between Miami and Southern Florida but the Bulls are going to make this ride a little bit interesting now. Uh, Derek Brooks is going to run it up himself. He'll pick up a few yards there. He's been a guy that's been carrying the rock a lot for this USF offense. But finally, USF will indeed find the end zone. But, you know, while Miami's offense wasn't great in this game, they did enough to win, winning by 13. But that being said, we have some more studio updates waiting for us for starters. Ole Miss is going to be able to put up a 50-burger against Southern Miss. And then Arkansas State also winning a very close one against Memphis as well out in the Sun Belt. And of course, in other news as well, we got Arizona and New Mexico uh, finishing up. And New Mexico, they've really been streaking so far. They win this game 38-17. As we now get into the final three games that we have here uh, in this particular episode, we'll now we'll start things off with Penn State going on the road to take on the Eagles of Boston College. Penn State uh, looking to get closer to that double-digit win type of season and doing good in doing so, 10-3 to 3 being your score. But Boston College, you know, they're trying to get out of that little funk of theirs themselves. They started the year 5-2, but they are on a free game losing streak right now. Uh, it's been a little bit of a collapse for the Boston College Eagles, or maybe they're just being exposed for what type of team they actually are, because Boston's college schedule was always a little bit tougher towards the back end of the season, right? So Boston College actually does have the lead, though, and the Nittany Lions looking to go to work. How about this guy making some guys miss, and there's nobody on screen now? Danny Davis! Able to Houdini his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Penn State. And the Nittany Lions will take the lead. But Victor Cross looks to respond, though. Less than a minute left. He fires a dot over the middle of the field. That's a nice throw for this experienced quarterback. So here we are again. Can Victor Cross keep it going? That's another great throw over the middle. This time to Willie Stewart. Victor Cross doing a great job leading his troops down the field. Still has a timeout too, but Cross on the very next play, he gets a little bit too greedy. Went to the well too many times, and Penn State is going to make those dreams come to an end real quick. And then and uh, we'll jump into that fourth quarter of action now. Still a close game here between these two teams, so hopefully that interception that we saw Victor Cross throw towards the end of the first half Hopefully that doesn't uh, hurt them too much. Hopefully it doesn't haunt them, frankly, as they try to do the two-point conversion. But I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what they, what he was trying to do there. Um, but it didn't work. It did not work. So they're down by five instead of just a field goal. They need a stop. And, well, that stop is just not going to happen. Penn State is going to score yet again. But we'll see if Boston College can make it interesting, though. Two minutes left. They still have all of their timeouts, too. And Cross does find his man in the back of the end zone. Nice touchdown there. But 
They can't get the onside kick, and because of that, a Penn State will go on and win this game. Boston College needs to win if they want to be bowl eligible. Speaking of teams that are already bowl eligible, though, we will now check in on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Even though they're ranked in the top 10, we haven't checked in on them too terribly often, but they are taking on Missouri. A little bit of a border war action here between these two squads as Nebraska uh, is actually not going to be in the lead there. They will kick a field goal there yet again. A very ugly low scoring game 9 to 7 being your score going into the final minutes but option is perfect for these types of situations those trying to run out the clock but they decide to pass the ball instead that's a bold strategy cotton and it's going to be an interception missouri gets the ball back and now the missouri tigers they are in business here yet again missouri has a chance to take the lead with less than two minutes left We'll see if they can do that as Jake Lewis fires to the left-hand side. His receiver will get out of bounds, so no need to even use a timeout there. You absolutely love to see it. As now, looking over the middle yet again, receiver breaks a couple of tackles. And after Steve Stanley's touchdown, they're 90 seconds away from pulling a big-time upset. But first, I'm going to go for the two-point conversion so that that extra point could come into play. But slant pattern gets picked off. So it's only a four-point lead. Nebraska does need a touchdown, though, in order to win this game. Someone is coming away as a winner, and someone's coming away a loser. We likely will not see overtime. We'll see what this Nebraska team can do. Got to get out of their comfort zone a little bit as they love to run. Their triple option as well. Looking over to the right hand side, and that's Eddie Robinson with a good catch. He really had to come up and get that one. He did accomplish that. So now in Missouri territory, looking over the middle. He's got a receiver yet again. That's a first down, and that's a goal line situation now for Nebraska. Got 41 seconds to work with, too, and they'll quickly get to the line of scrimmage. First and goal, C.J. McIntyre. He's going to be in the pistol, dropping back. He's going to try to run it himself. He's got space, and C.J. McIntyre, he's going to score. Nebraska is going to survive after all as they take down the Missouri Tigers in their regular season finale. So the last game that we have here is a top 25 matchup out in the great state of Texas. We got number 17, Rice, who has lost the last couple of their games. They'll be taking on the number 10 ranked Texas Longhorns, and you can check out those Alamos division standings. Whoever wins this game will be competing for a conference championship title. They'll likely get the host as well, given what's happening in the Lone Star Division. And how about Chase Ingram getting the scoring started, finding Landon Curtis down the sideline. And that is a 76-yard touchdown on Chase Ingram's very first throw of the game. That might have been a one-handed grab as well. That was a nice job there, snagging that one in. Not even losing any momentum either, but this Rice team has been having a good season as well. This Rice team is going to prove why they're a number 17 team in the nation. As they get an explosive play of their own, Michael Montgomery able to get 22 yards off of that swing pass. So now Rice looking to even things up, and sure enough, they will with Rob Johnson on the receiving end. Touchdown, Owls. Jeff Furducks. With a good throw over the middle. And that will even things up here in Austin, Texas. We could be in for a classic. Now, going into that second quarter of action. Fudux looking to drop back. Looks over the middle. But that is a great play by the linebacker, though. Oh, my word. Did he have to go up to the heavens in order to make that catch? Josh O'Neill coming down and making it happen. Giving him the business there. But in spite of that, though, Rice gets a couple of field goals off screen, and they get another touchdown here. So Rice, not only showing that they're not afraid to spotlight, dare I say it, they are shining in the spotlight right now. Really giving Texas everything that they can handle right now. Matter of fact, when we go into the fourth quarter, Texas is still down by 10 points. They need a lot to happen here in order to win like this. How did this even happen? 
Julian Sanders, a certified bad man. Chase Ingram gets a second passing touchdown of the day. I mean, look at this. This was supposed to be a little out pattern, just trying to dump it off. And Julian Sanders gets a couple of broken tackles, even some blocks. My man was gone like a girl in a country song. So Texas is back in this game, only down by a field goal too. And Rice, well, Rice is starting to fade here towards the end. They need a red zone stop, and they're not going to get it. Landon Curtis is going to score yet again. And now Rice needs a last second drive of their own. They will start possibly their last drive of the game at the 25-yard line. Viaducts going to throw this one downfield. He's got a man. He's open. Huge play for the Owls. That's why you don't play with your food, because Rice is coming for you. Dropping back, looking, Theodox for the end zone, but it's going to be picked off. And the fat lady, well, she is officially going to be singing now. Oh, no. Texas is going to win. Texas wins 24-20 to in this one. It looks like the Longhorns will be going for the Big 12 championship title. It was a really an exciting game to watch. So let's go ahead and get things rolling now with some other scores that happened all around the country outside of the gameplay here tonight. We have Hawaii continuing their winning ways as they win yet again, this time against the Nevada Wolfpack. Hawaii wins 21-14 as George Gentry's offensive guru-ness leads Hawaii to 8-3. As for the Seminoles of Florida State, they also continue their winning ways as well. Florida State is going to get a 28-6 victory over Florida Atlantic as the Seminoles notch their eighth win of the season. But how about this for an absolute blowout as the Miami Redhawks continue to strengthen their case to get into the top 25 late in this season. They do so by blowing out Ball State 48-0 as the Red Hawks are also going to reach that 8-3 record going into the final week of the regular season. As for the Tulane Green Wave, they go to town against Louisiana Tech. As Tulane wins 42-17, the Green Wave also putting together an above-average season. They're at 8-3 as well after this big-time victory at home. Meanwhile, for the University of California, they took on the Commodores of Vanderbilt. And Cal was able to win one out. They get a 24-14 victory, also reaching that 8-3 record as they solidify their spot inside the top 25. Speaking of teams that are playing good football right now, Louisiana Monroe finishing the regular season a little bit early, but on a high note, they blow out Utah State 38-6 as Louisiana Monroe, the Warhawks, finishing with a strong 8-4 record here in the regular season. As for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, they are going to enter the top 25 as well, doing so by beating Texas State 45-31. Rutgers finished their regular season 8-4 and, and will look to finish in the regular season in that top 25. It's very likely that happens. Now the Charlotte 49ers, they also went to town against Wake Forest as Charlotte wins big here. 41-3 being your final score. The 49ers, because of this impressive performance yet again, they are now in the top 25 as well, coming in at number 23 in the country. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Golden Gophers will find themselves in the top 10 firmly. Could be a little bit of a controversy, but they continue to win in order to ease that pressure, beating Kansas State 34-24, getting to that 8 free mark as well going into the final week of the regular season. But we get a big time win from the Bowling Green Falcons taking down Eastern Michigan. And in that last conference standings update, I talked about both of these teams. So Bowling Green, if they can win their regular season finale in the next episode, it will be they and not Iowa that will be going to that American Conference Championship game to try to take down the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We wish the Bowling Green Falcons the best of luck with that, but it's a great win here in a game that they needed for conference implications. So now here we are going into the AP Top 25, and as of right now, this is what your Top 25 is going to be looking like going into the final week of the regular season. 
And aside from that big upset that Ohio State did have, we also didn't see too many changes. A lot of schools did end up moving up one singular spot. We do end up finding where Ohio State ends up. They fall all the way to number 11 in the country. That loss to Akron was a tough pill to swallow late in the season as there's not a lot of opportunities to make up that ground. So Ohio State could be in trouble in terms of going to the college football playoff, even though they only lost one game because of the conference really not pulling its weight necessarily. But we do have some other notable changes. Tulane moves up two spots as well. They go to number 16. UCLA falls down five spots to number 17 after their loss to USC. Hawaii moves up a couple spots. They continue uh, their strong finish here in the regular season. They're up to number 18 in the country with the Florida State Seminoles up to 19 representing for the SEC. Rice, however, they lost their third consecutive game. They're going to be out of that Big 12 championship hunt, but they're still hanging around at number 20, though. It's been a good season. Rounding out your top 25, though, is Florida at number 21. Rutgers, as we mentioned, and Charlotte both breaking into that top 25. And then rounding out your group is Virginia Tech, who's going to hang on here at number 24. And Syracuse, who gets back into the top 25. They've had a pretty good season at 7 and 4, but it looks like they will not be returning back to the college football playoff. But there it is, guys. We only have one more week of regular season football, and then we get busy with it with that postseason action. Next episode, we will wrap up the regular season. And as we show gameplay in week number 14, what I will also do as well is show you the conferences, the top five conferences that will likely get an automatic bid because automatic bids are not based on the top five conference champions it's based on the top five conferences it kind of accounts for that strength of schedule so it's gonna be fun i can't wait to see how things turn out in that final regular season week as well as see how things are shaking out in conference races who's gonna get those automatic bids for their conference it's gonna be fun to watch and i hope you guys are excited for it if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button for me hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel this is john jay cavey on the mic signing off hoping you guys are all out there having a good one take care everybody